Hi, my name is Dr. Mike Cooper, and this is daily coverage from Vision Expo West. We're going to be talking with Dr. Nate Lighthizer regarding his in-office electrodiagnostics. What can it do for you? Nate, give me the feedback. What did you talk about in your course? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, over the course of the last few years, I've given that talk or a variant of that talk a number of times, and the interest has certainly peaked over the course of the last three or four or five years. Electrodiagnostics is evolving and it's changing. Um, six, seven, eight years ago, it was something that was in the research center. It was in a big ophthalmology practice or maybe an optometry school. And we were doing this for cone dystrophies or retinitis pigmentosa, which we still do, but it's evolving now to become more a part of private practice optometry where we're seeing glaucoma patients and we're doing OCTs to look at structure. We're also doing VEPs and ERGs to look at function as well as the visual field to look at function. Can you flesh it out a little bit more for us regarding glaucoma and how you use it in your practice? Yeah. We, we usually do it about once a year in our, in our practice. We're a referral center, so patients are sent to us. But we're doing OCTs about once a year and VEPs and ERGs once a year. The VEP looks at the entire visual pathway from front of the eye all the way back uh, to the occipital cortex or V1. How these machines work now is they can separate magnocellular and parvocellular, looking at high contrast and low contrast. The low contrast is the magnocellular. And we think that's the pathway that's really involved early in glaucoma and detecting changes in that. Uh, can be the earliest indicator of glaucoma. So we're now looking at the low contrast latency and how long does it take for that visual signal to get back to the occipital cortex. In a normal individual, it's anywhere from about 100 to 125 milliseconds. That can be delayed in glaucoma, among other conditions, to 130, 135, or even 140 milliseconds and beyond. So we're really looking at the latency and the delay on the VEP. Very good. Can you give us some correlatives regarding the other tests? You mentioned OCT. Is there a way to actually use electrodiagnostics as a method to basically supplement it, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's a great supplement because they're really looking at uh, different things. It's that structure versus function debate, which comes first, the chicken or the egg, structure or function. You know, we look at visual fields and there's a lot of research that says a lot of those ganglion cells are dead by the time a patient has an early visual field defect. OCT is certainly better and it looks at structure. Well, we've got this great structure test with the OCT. Now we've got a supplement to look at the function with the uh, VEP and the ERG. So they really go hand in hand, one looking at structure and the other looking at function. Very good. Can you give us a pearl? One last thing that you think it's, it's really important for the doctors out there? I think it's important to not be scared of the technology. It's newer technology. It's something that hasn't been utilized very much over the course of the last 10, 15, or 20 years. That is changing, and there's a lot of doctors utilizing this. The more that you get comfortable with this, the more that you get used to this, looking at the printouts, interpreting cases, utilizing this in patient care, the more comfortable that that doctors are going to get, and I think it's going to be a, a, a nice piece of equipment that they're going to have in their office. Well, thanks, Nate, for your time. Really appreciate it. This has been I2OD's daily coverage from Vision Expo West.